Here's how to capture testimonials using Drive Architect. Open the page where you want to capture the testimonials in Drive Architect. Then you will have to add your element and for that click on the plus sign from the right sidebar and look for the captured testimonials element. Once you find it, simply grab it and drag and drop it on your page. As you do that, a pop-up will open and from here you can choose a template. So right after you add your element, its options will appear on the left sidebar. Now this element is very similar to a lead generation element, so if you're familiar with that, you should have no problems in customizing this one. But let's quickly go through the options. So first of all, you have the template section right here, and you'll be able to go back to the template library if you click on this one and choose another template for the element. Here you should just keep in mind that if you decide to replace the template after you start customizing your element, all the changes will be lost. So we do recommend that you change the template before you start to customize your element in case you don't want your modifications to be lost. So now we can go through the main options. As I said, if you're familiar with a form element or a lead generation element from Drive Architect, this should be very familiar to you. So first of all, we have the edit form elements button. And if you click on it, you are able to edit each part of this form. So each element inside the actual captured testimonial element. We call this the edit mode and you can click on each element and use the left sidebar options to customize it as you wish. So for example, if we want to edit the way the avatar will look like, we can click on it and simply adjust the options from this left sidebar. For this avatar element, you can allow your users to choose the image that they want to display here by connecting their Google or Facebook accounts, by enabling Gravatar, so if they have an account there, that image will be immediately inherited, or with a custom URL. Of course, from the back end of your site, you will need to create a Google and Facebook connection for these options to be available. But right now, if I click on done and I save and preview my page, and if they click on this pencil icon, then they will be able to load a new avatar. And as you can see right now, they can only use Gravatar or no image. If I go back to my element and go back to the edit mode and click on the avatar element, we can also activate the custom URL option and of course save everything and preview the page. And now if we access this pop-up again, we'll see that they will also be allowed to add a custom URL for their avatar. Once you create your Google and Facebook connections from your API dashboard, they will be able to connect their Google and Facebook accounts to use their profile images from there. And now for this element, you will also have some options like this size slider right here that of course you can use to adjust the size of the element or you can simply input a numerical value right here. From this edit button type section, you can choose how you want to let your users edit their image. And right now the icon type is selected by default. And as you've seen, as a user, you can simply click on this icon and change your image. Or we can go for the overlay option, which as you can see will take away the icon. But whenever someone hovers over their avatar image, they can see the pencil icon and click on it to edit their avatar. I'm going to stick to the icon option. And as you can see, if you choose it, you will also be able to choose its positioning. So we can put it to the left or to the right side of the image. Now, if you want to replace your default avatar image with another one, you can also do that. And for that, you can simply click on this default avatar section, and this will take you to your media library. And from here, you can simply choose an image and this will be your default avatar. Once you're done using the edit mode, simply click on done and you will be taken back to your main options. Now you have the option to select a main color for your captured testimonial element. And for that, just click on this color box and you can simply modify it from here using your theme colors. Or if you want to unlink this from your theme color, you can click on this button and then you will be able to modify the colors using the color picker here or by adding a RGB code and so on. I'm going to stick to one of my theme colors and click on apply. 
And now comes the connection part. And this is a very important section in case you want to connect your Travelvation form to an autoresponder or any email delivery service. And if you do set up such a connection, of course, the data that is submitted through this form can be passed through to your selected service. The connection can be done either through API or by HTML code. And in this case, you will have to insert your code right here. If you click on API, then you have to choose where you want to send your information to. So your leads and you can click on this add connection button, which will open this pop up that you're probably used to from the lead generation element. And here you will see a list with all of the connections that you have previously created from your drive dashboard. If you're yet to connect the service you want from your API dashboard, you will have this shortcut right here that if you click on, will take you right to the API connections section of your drive dashboard. And then you can quickly create your connection and come back here and you will have the service in this list. So as you can see, Triveovation will be automatically connected here and cannot be removed. This is going to be mandatory for Ovation Capture Forms, but what you can do is click on this edit button and add tags if you want to do that. And the tags you add here will show up in your Triveovation dashboard. So this can come in handy if you have multiple capture forms throughout your website. You can use this tagging feature to distinguish and group them or to find out which forms bring you the most testimonials and so on. And now from this section, you are able to modify your form fields. These come by default from the template that I've chosen here. And this can be rearranged simply by clicking on the left side of the field and dragging it up and down as you see here. If you want to remove any of the form fields, this is as easy as clicking on the remove button from here. And of course, to edit one, you can simply click on this pencil icon and modify what you see fit. To add a new form field, click on this add new button and customize it from this pop-up. The next step is to choose what happens after someone successfully submits the form. And this can be done from this section right here. And you can click on this field to open the pop-up with your available options. So the first one is to redirect to a custom URL. And if you choose it, then here's where you will input your target URL. And the second one is to show a success notification. So if someone submits the form, they are not redirected to another page. They're just shown a success notification. And if you choose it, then this is where you are able to modify the text from the notification. And you can also preview it like so. In the case of the redirect to custom URL option, you also have the send form values to thank you page section. And this will send the values completed by the users in the form, so their name, email address, and so on, to the personalized thank you page as URL query strings. You can deactivate this if you want. Lastly, in the advanced section of this element, you will have the form identifier that is an ID uniquely assigned to each form that you can use for other Drive Suite products. For example, if you create an automation in Drive Automator, this can come in really handy to create an automation that is strictly related to this capture testimonials form. If you want to get ahead of spam signups, for example, then you can add a CAPTCHA system to this element. But remember that to do this, you must first set up an API connection with Google reCAPTCHA. Of course, we do have a tutorial on how to do that and you can find it in our knowledge base. And lastly, you can edit the default error messages by typing in the messages that you want your users to see if they don't fill in the fields correctly. And if you click on this edit error messages option, as you can see, a pop-up will open and you can modify all of the possible error messages. Now, this is how you can capture testimonials using Tribe Architect and how to use the options of the capture testimonial element. Hopefully you found this tutorial useful and make sure to check out our YouTube channels and knowledge base for more information on Tribe Suite products.